it's Victoria with Metabolic Health Summit and we have a guest who I'm very excited to bring on today because we're going to be talking about a topic that's not often discussed or uh, should be discussed more, I should say, uh, mental health. Her name is Dr. Georgia Ead, and she's a pretty incredible woman. She's a, a Harvard-trained, board-certified psychiatrist who specializes in nutrition and college mental health. She's also the first psychiatrist at Harvard University Health Services to actually offer nutrition as an alternative uh, to medication. So pretty special guest today that we have on, and she's gonna be speaking at Metabolic Health Summit. If you haven't got your tickets, they're going quick. Make sure you secure those soon at metabolichealthsummit.com, and let's see if she's on here so we can add her in. All right, let's uh, see if Facebook will cooperate today. All right, Georgia wants to join the video. Very excited to have you in, Dr. Eid. Connecting. Yay, we did it. We have success. <laughs> Oh, it's always a good the day when Facebook, wants to, yeah, when Facebook wants to cooperate. It's always a good day in my book, right? Hello, Victoria. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this live video with me today. I think it's just one, we're so excited to have you as a speaker at Metabolic Health Summit um, because what you, uh, your, your work and what you've done and the fact that you're incorporating nutrition into the mix when it comes to metabolic health is something that you really don't hear too much about, and we couldn't be more honored to have you with us in January as a speaker. I'm thrilled that you invited me, and, and in such good company, uh, as we were speaking before about this really kind of round, groundbreaking session you're having at the Metabolic Health Summit with Dr. Bredesen and Dr. Rowe and Dr. Kunain. Um, you know, all four of us will be speaking about brain health and then there'll, there'll be a panel and a discussion afterward. And that's, that's something new that I haven't seen at other conferences. And I'm, I, think it's, I think it's a fabulous idea. And I hope that you know, people will get a lot out of the combination of the information that's shared. Thank you, I, I really appreciate that. And it wouldn't be possible without our incredible speakers. And I, we really appreciate what you're bringing to the table and, and the important work you do. Because um, you know, when I first learned about your work as a psychiatrist and really sort of setting a new standard for Harvard Health uh, was, you know, I was blown away to hear that there was somebody who was actually using food as the powerful tool that it can potentially be for people. Um, so I want to talk, I want to backtrack a little bit and, and allow for people to get to know you a little bit better and talk about how this sort of started for you. You're, uh, you've been a psychiatrist for over 20 years, is my understanding, which is incredible. And you've uh, really, you incorporate food into working with your clients. And, but talk about how it started for you personally, because I, I believe it was your your mom who might have inspired uh, this path to begin with, right? Well, yeah, you know, I, I my interest in food, uh, you know, goes back a long way to childhood, and I, you know, I, I think like most women, I thought of food purely as a way to control my weight, and uh, I didn't know about low carbohydrate diets until. Uh, in my 30s, when my mom lost 90 pounds on the Atkins diet, I always followed the, sort of the low fat, uh, low cholesterol, high exercise, calorie counting plan. Uh, but anyway, she lost 90 pounds on the Atkins diet, and I was really, you know, surprised by that. So I, I started exploring various versions of low carbohydrate diets for myself. And but I didn't, and that and and eventually with some success, but I didn't. Uh, come to become interested in the connection between food and mental health until years later in my early 40s when I was trying to, you know, I was experimenting with my diet to try to help myself with some other problems that had cropped up for me, um, some chronic pain and fatigue and things like that, um, IBS and migraines, and uh, stumbled upon uh, an, uh, uh, some other dietary changes that made a big difference for me physically, but also happened to help my concentration and mood and energy in ways I hadn't even been trying to do. So right. as a psychiatrist, I got really curious about that. Why would this diet that I'd stumbled on and that now lots of people are stumbling on, it's not just low carb, but it's also important to, you know, to be careful with, you know, grains and legumes and even certain vegetables sometimes, but making sure you're including fat and meat and cholesterol and, uh, making changes to the diet that actually the brain really appreciates. And so yeah. when that happened, I 
I was worried that my new sort of high meat, high cholesterol diet was going to kill me. <laughs> so what I just, <laughs> so I, just I, I felt the same I felt the same way when I first started the diet years ago. <laughs> it was kind of unmarked territory, right? You're like, what? How is this diet making me feel better when it's not, you know, all these bad things you hear? But continue. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And uh, so, and I hadn't studied nutrition before. So uh, I was conventionally trained and prescribed medications and, and did psychotherapy. And so I started studying nutrition, really studying nutrition very, very deeply and obsessively. And I've been doing that for more than 10 years now. And it became really clear, as you and so many other people now know, you just scratch the surface of these nutrition guidelines and there is no science there. Um, so uh, it, 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 it's really interesting. It's quite quite simple what the brain needs in order to function and so many of the foods that people think of as healthy are actually working against their good mental health and it there are really simple changes people can make that can make a big difference and may help people to reduce the need for medications or in some cases even eliminate the need for medications we have so many people on psychiatric medications now and it would be interesting to know how many of those people may not need all of that medication. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, in the people that you've worked with and incorporating food into the mix, what you've seen now, how, what sort of percentage would you say just in terms of like how important your food choices are when it comes to, you know, maybe treating what you're, whether it's depression or anxiety and things that are, so many people are dealing with today? Yeah, you know, well, it, it couldn't be more important. You know, we think of we think of mental health problems as chemical imbalances in the brain. Well, where do the brain chemicals come from? They come right. from food. And so if you feed your brain properly, um, then you actually know who you really are and what you're really capable of, what your personal best is. I think when most of us have been feeding our brain the wrong way our entire lives, and therefore, you know, you might think of yourself as an anxious person at heart, or you might think of yourself as scattered or depressed, or, you know, you may even have been diagnosed with a serious mental illness or even been hospitalized, but you have no idea what you're actually like, who you actually are, how your brain actually works, what symptoms you actually have or don't have, until you take all of the foods out that are working against you and put the foods in that will work for you, then you know what your real baseline is. And for some people, their anxiety or depression or ADHD, or whatever it is, goes away. And so I, I've, I've yet to work with a person where food has not made a difference. It's certainly not the case that everybody can go off of their medication, but I've, everyone I've worked with has been willing to try dietary changes. It's made a big difference. And, you know, there are all kinds of special tweaks and things involved and in working with the medications and so forth. But, um, but there's no question that it's a powerful intervention. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so interesting that you sort of learned about it later, following, you know, schooling and all of that and what you sort of went through. You know, mental health uh, impacts so many of us. I mean, it's, it's all, over the, all, all around us, right? And whether it's your family member or you know somebody or maybe you're dealing with it yourself, it, for me, is somebody who, you know, mental health, uh, you know, and people in my life, it's impacted just knowing that there is a potential out there, an option out there that's non-toxic. And it's just sort of, I mean, I say just, it is a big deal to change your lifestyle, but it's food, right? It's something that we can enjoy and fat tastes good. So it's, it's actually quite a fun lifestyle. But knowing this, for me personally, I just become so passionate about trying to get the word out about how food can make such a difference. What is that like for you as somebody who's dedicated your life to helping people with mental health in want, I can only imagine you probably want to scream from the mountaintops. And you, do, <laughs> you, you write some great, uh, you know, you speak all over the world. You write great uh, blogs. If you've not checked out uh, Dr. Eads uh, website, as well as psychology today, I mean, you've got some incredible articles out there in the world, but what is that like for you personally? I love it. I love it. I'm really, really passionate about it. And I want to inspire other psychiatrists and nurse practitioners and primary care doctors around the world to incorporate these principles into their practices. Because what any psychiatrist will tell you is that being a psychiatrist with using conventional means is very challenging. 
Um, medications don't always work. In fact, <laughs> you, often you have to try three, four, five, six different medications before you find something that might actually help. And most medications don't help completely. And most medications have side effects. And there are so many people that don't want to take medication or who can't afford to take medication or who develop side effects and they can't stay on the medication or they want an all natural approach, you know, um, or the medication doesn't work. And, and then what do you do? Then you're stuck. And I've, I've had many, many patients over the years where we run out of options or the options that we're left with are really, a, a, you know, a compromise that in order to yeah. be able to function, go to work or go to school, they have to put up with some pretty difficult side effects sometimes. And it's a, it, it's, it's it, having something else to offer people um, if they're willing to try it is so, it gives you tremendous it's really empowering for the people you're working with as well as for me to feel like okay there's something else we can do if you're open to it yeah and they and they have the power to make that change which like you yes. said it's so empowering and you feel empowered like hey i can make a difference in my day-to-day -day life that i'm sure ch changes their outlook to what they're dealing with and those positive thoughts hopefully will help in the process i can only imagine you know, what that sort of chain reaction is like. Where, where do you see, and I could probably talk to you on this topic for like hours, but I'm going to try to reel it in. But <laughs> where, where, how, how do you see this change in more psychiatrists and mental health, um, you know, uh, practitioners and whatnot? Where do you see this change really? How is it going to happen where we're talking about food to these patients more and more, and we're talking more openly about mental health and how our daily lifestyle choices make a difference? Well, I do feel like there, there's, a, there's a shift happening. It's starting to happen. Um, at, for example, um, just uh, last year, um, Professor Felice Jacka from Australia, who's one of the pioneering food and mental health researcher in Australia, she launched an organization called the International Society for, Psychi for Nutritional Psychiatry Research, the first organization of its kind in the world. And so I attended their first meeting and uh, it, was, um, it was wonderful. There were you know, people from all over the world who think about this and, who, and some who have been studying um, nutrition and mental health for a very long time. So, and that's, that organization is, is going to grow. And, and, and that organization, part of its um, mission is to um, foster new research in the field. And so there are more and more papers coming out now about nutrition and psychiatry. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of creating a buzz in the academic world where it's, 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 it's okay now to talk about food and mental health. There actually are connections, inflammation, oxidation, insulin resistance, hormonal imbalance, lots of different pathways between food and brain health that are backed up by the literature now. So you, you're not perceived as crazy if you, if you uh, recommend some of these uh, um, you know, low carb diets or ketogenic diets to patients, it's not so strange now. Um, so I think that, that, the, that the academic world is coming on board. Uh, and then I think in the popular literature, people are starting to write books, people are starting to give talks, uh, not just me, but other people as well, uh, psychiatrists and neurologists. Um, talking about the importance of food and the brain, so it's 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 starting to it's starting to spill into popular um, uh, outlets as well. So it's not just the scientists and the researchers who are thinking about it. There's it's going to create a demand um, when when people hear that this is possible, they're going to want to work with people who know how to do this. And yeah. one of the great things, as you were saying, is that it, it's empowering. Uh, you depending on what you're dealing with, you may not need a lot of help with this. A lot of these things are things people can do on their own without um, a specialist. And so that's really uh, gives people a lot more control, you know, over their destiny as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and you even brought up migraines, which is something that I personally, part of the reason I switched over to a low carb lifestyle was because of that. And I know you've dealt with it yourself and seeing you really don't understand like the power of food until you actually kind of go through that shift and see not only has it impacted my life, but actually my dog, uh, who's an epileptic, she went on the diet for her oh. seizures. They're completely, they're completely gone. I mean, we control it through a ketogenic diet, which is like, once you see that kind of big change happen, it's really hard to go backwards. And I just um, really respect and admire a lot of the work you're doing and getting the message out about how important food is in when it comes to brain health really excited about your talk if you want to 
briefly touch on what you're going to be discussing at Metabolic Health Summit. Um, would, that would be great. Sure. Uh, so um, my talk is about understanding food and talking about nutritional psychiatry as offering um, new treatment options for people with mental health disorders. Because most people don't, most people still don't know that these are options. Most people still think of medications and psychotherapy as the cornerstone of mental health treatment. And I think ignoring nutrition is, um, uh, is, is, is um, no longer acceptable. I think uh, we know too much now to be able to, uh, to, to not put this on the table as an option. Um, of course, not everybody's gonna to wanna to change their diet, but for people who do, it can make a tremendous difference. So this presentation is going to, um, it's gonna review the, what we know now, bring everybody up to date about the science of uh, low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets and other diets as well in, um, um, in terms of what the science tells us today about how diet can affect various mental health disorders from bipolar disorder to schizophrenia to depression uh, to ADHD uh, to autism. So just review all of that science and let people know where it stands now because it's constantly changing and growing, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, I'll also be including some in basic information, general information um, that a lot of people don't think about um, beyond low carb and ketogenic diets because uh, I think a lot of people who attend the summit or be interested in the summit may already have uh, may already have heard that low carbon ketogenic diets may be good for the brain, but it's not just about low carbohydrate and improving brain metabolism. It's about being careful with your food choices and making sure you understand which foods are working for you and which foods are working against you. So it's not just about carbohydrates. It's also about which fats you eat and what kinds of proteins you eat. Um, so that uh, by the end of the talk, I hope people have a lot of information they can use right away. That's great, and thank you for sharing that. It's so important to really talk about quality of, of the foods we eat as well, and that's something that you know we're so passionate about at Metabolic Health Summit is really getting the science out there. You know, let's have like not a who's right, who's wrong, but let's talk about where the science is headed and what that is inclusive of, and have a conversation that's you know includes everybody. But let's really talk about quality of foods and, and, you know, sort of set the record straight in terms of education around that. So I'm really, really excited about your talk that's going to be going down in January, just next month. It's almost here. Um, so what, what would you say, because I'm sure there may be some people watching that, you know, maybe they suffer from depression or anxiety or have, you know, battled, had a family member battle with mental health issues. What would you say in terms of, you know, I, I know that you're, um, there are other psychiatrists that are starting to, you know, use food as a tool that, that it can be, uh, but it's still sort of slow moving. What would you say to somebody who, um, you know, really wants to include food as that missing piece for them in, in their sort of battle with mental health? Yeah, so uh, I think it's really important. It depends whether you're taking medications or not. So if you're not taking medications, a lot of these things are things you can do um, just by learning about which food choices make sense. You could read some of the articles that I have out there uh, on Psychology Today. They're all free articles or on my website or watch, watch my talk in January or other talks that are already available online. This will be a new talk for the Metabolic Health Summit, by the way. Um, so, uh, you know, educate yourself about, you know, learn what you need to know and make, make these healthy food choices. If you're taking medication though, it's a different story, especially if you're going to try a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet, because the low carbon ketogenic diets can, um, they, what they have a really profound in a good way, um, effect on your metabolism in uh, very quickly. These are really healthy changes, but if you're taking medications, these metabolic changes inside, the, inside your body that happen when you get off the carbohydrates, um, they can affect uh, your uh, medication levels and they can cause some side effects in some cases. So depending on the medication. Um, so it's important if you're taking the medication, you're gonna change your diet, especially for low carbon ketogenic diet. You wanna make sure you talk to whoever's prescribing your medication first. And, um, and, and you know, if, if they're not, uh, and either get their support and they're okay, or um, ask them if they would be willing to educate themselves a little bit more about it and work with you, <clears throat> because it, it, it can be tricky to try to do that on your own. <clears throat> so I do have an article on psychology today that I wrote specifically for this purpose, because 
so many psychiatrists, even though they may be very interested, don't have a lot of experience with ketogenic diets and medication adjustments. So um, there's an article on psychology today. I think it's just called ketogenic diets and psychiatric medications or something like that. And that's free for everybody to, to read. Uh, that gives you some guidance uh, and can give your clinician some guidance as well. Um, and, uh, but, I, but if you're not taking medication, uh, it, there, you know, it's, it's a lot more, more straightforward. And, you know, look for a psychiatrist or a nutritionist or a primary care doctor who knows something about low-carb diets or who is at least willing to learn about low-carbohydrate diets. Um, and if, if the person you're working with is, is not supportive, you may want to change or add somebody onto your team who can, who can you know, uh, provide some guidance for, your, for your, the rest of your team. So uh, um, I do think it will become easier and easier over time uh, to find people who are, who are on board. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like you mentioned, it's becoming more and more well known that we really have to pay attention to what we're what we're putting in our bodies because you know we focus often so much on physical health, but our mon mental health, our minds, are such an important part of the equation. And how we choose to lead our lives every day makes it makes a pretty big difference. So thank yeah. you for those resources. I actually read that uh, article that you wrote on psychology today, and it's a, a pretty incredible article. I'll um, link it below in the comment section oh, after our live. If people want to read more about that, I think it's a just a wealth of, of knowledge there on uh, low carbohydrate approach and if you're actually on medication uh, currently. But as Dr. Eid mentioned, it's so important to work alongside your physician throughout this process and, um, you know, really have a good conversation about the ketogenic diet, low carb, and be open and honest in that process because hopefully you'll wind up lucky and have somebody similar to Dr. Eid who's open and really uh, advocates, you know, making good lifestyle choices in the process. You actually have some really incredible resources that are coming out uh, here soon. I know one, you're working on a book, which is really great and is so needed out there right now just to really talk about uh, you know, nutrition and mental health, but you're also working on something with the diet doctor, if you wanna explain. Yes, uh, I don't think he would mind me mentioning this. Uh, Dr. Andres Einfeld and I are working together to create a low carb mental health guide for his diet doctor website. And uh, it's just about finished, so it should be going up soon. I, I don't know, I can't say exactly when, um, but that's uh, designed to be a comprehensive resource that will explain, um, it will include the medication piece, but it will explain why a low carbohydrate diet makes sense for the brain, all the different uh, ways that it helps brain chemistry. And it will also summarize uh, for each different uh, diagnosis like ADHD and bipolar disorder and depression, it will summarize uh, some of the research and, uh, ex and, and I've also shared some case examples from my um, clinical practice uh, in this article. So uh, we want it to be a resource for the world uh, so that clinicians and, and uh, people who are uh, struggling with mental health issues around the world can begin to improve um, the nutrition of their brain and hopefully uh, improve their mental health as well. It's a, it's a really logical place to start. And this resource, is, as far as we can tell, there isn't something like this yet available. So it'll be the kind of the first of its kind. And then the book will expand on, on that. Uh, hopefully oh, sometime next year. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, I can't even imagine how long it takes to get something out there, there into the yeah. world like that, <laughs> which is so exciting and so needed, though. So thank you for taking the time to put a book together because mental health affects so many people, like I mentioned. And I think that it, it takes people like yourself and, you know, we're really dedicated uh, in the platform that we have with Metabolic Health Summit to get the message out about, you know, to openly talk about mental health issues more and to really provide people maybe with some tools that they can just do in their own kitchen, which is a huge deal when you, when you think about how we're currently sort of treating these uh, issues as a whole and really talking about it too. So thank you for all the incredible work that you're doing. I'm so excited for the book that's going to be coming out and you'll definitely have to keep us in the loop on that. Sure. Uh, as, as well as what you're doing with Diet Doctor um, that is on his website. You've also got a great website, diagnosisdiet.com, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And there's some great resources there as well. Um, what's next for you? I know you had mentioned to me that you are shifting to sort of working with people online. 
Yes. Uh, so a lot of people have asked me, you know, can, can they talk to me for an hour? Can they ask me some questions? And I, uh, you know, uh, I had been working for a long time in college mental health and wasn't really set up to uh, have a, a private practice of any kind for the you know, recent years. Uh, and so right now I'm taking some time away from college mental health to focus 100% of my time on, on nutrition writing and speaking. And, and what I'm launching very soon is an online consultation service Unfortunately, it can only be for residents of Massachusetts for uh, malpractice reasons, but um, that way people have questions um, about nutrition and mental health or, or, or nutrition in general, because I, you know, I, I know a lot about food that goes beyond mental health, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, so you know, if people want to talk to me, there will be a way to do that. But uh, for right now, it will just be for Massachusetts. But I, I'm really excited about that and hope that people will find that helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So, well, thank you for all the great work you're doing. Thank you for joining us as a speaker in January. Uh, it's January 31st and February 3rd. If you don't have tickets yet, uh, Dr. Eid will be speaking there on mental health specifically and low carb lifestyles. But at the same time, as you mentioned, really diving into some of the great information around quality of food as well, which I find just fascinating. So Thank you for joining me today. Did, if anybody has questions, you can definitely post. We've actually got some pretty incredible uh, comments here that we're getting from people just thanking you, uh, on what you on your work and what you speak about and the fact that it's coming to Metabolic Health Summit. And so many people here are also sharing how uh, they feel so incredible after was one lady wrote, went on antidepressants, antidepressants after 9-11. Uh, she was a flight mm -hmm. attendant and had horrible side effects, weight gain. She feels so much better eating keto, losing weight, and medication-free. Another lady who Wonderful. actually is a dietitian. Yeah, I mean, this is great. It's, it's incredible to hear stories like this. Um, another lady here who is actually a dietitian had, uh, is just thanking you uh, in terms of bringing this topic of mental health uh, to Metabolic Health Summit. And it's uh, the newest application uh, in her practice is focusing on diet. So Thank you for recommending the resources um, that you have out there in the world. And thank you for your hard work in putting this on paper. So, so many of us can really dive into it and learn more because it's a topic that needs to be studied. And th thank her for doing the work that she's doing. We need more dietitians and nutritionists uh, who are on board with these, with these principles. <laughs> I 100% agree. Yeah, we've got some great uh, dietitians speaking at, at the conference. We've got a great scientific poster session so you can kind of see even some of the research that's not published yet, which is exciting. So thank you, Dr. Eads, for taking the time out today. And thank you all for joining us and watching this live. If uh, you felt sort of re something resonated with you, you want to share this to somebody who might be dealing with mental health issues, please do. Please share this on Facebook so we can get the message out. So thank you again, and we'll be seeing you in January. Thank you, Victoria. Thanks a lot for inviting me.